just going to share the screen. I think Brisbane has to stop sharing first. Yeah, thanks. So, yeah, welcome to the um, LFI presentation. So we're not in Svalbard, obviously. Um, I'm Henry Pesanen from the LFI development team, and I'll be presenting our software package uh, today. So LFI is mainly being developed in four different universities, Aalto University, University of Helsinki, uh, Edinburgh, and, and University of Oslo. And... Um, I think the main main maintenance is now currently coming from the University of Oslo. So uh, all the additional questions that you can find answers to, you can send me an email. So um, ELFI is, an, is the Python library for likelihood free insurance. So it's um, available from uh, to, to pip install or conda install, or you can find the development source uh, from the GitHub. Uh, we aim to, to cater practitioners and methodologists by providing a library of, of LFI methods for practitioners. And for a methodologist, we aim to design a platform for new methods. So we have some features that you may find convenient, like automatic parallelization, data storing, and random number seeding for reproducibility. And of course, the the ELFI models. So ELFI models are basically just the, the inference models containing the prior simulators, summaries, and distance nodes. And the, the main ELFI paper and the, the engine is um, described in the JMLR paper from 2018, which you can find uh, online. So let's get started with the actual presentation and describe what an ELFI model is. So it's a DAG. So we provide the interface for constructing these ELFI models and we use Network X package for handling these graphs in practice. And what we do is that we have the API for, for describing the ELFI model and we turn that into the computational graph, which is the model augmented with some additional nodes like the observed data. Um, some additional parameter values that we use. Um, what's that? I'm sorry. Um, No, that wasn't a question, sorry. There was some interference in the, in the audio. So the nodes in the ELFI model, they are either data or operations that output data. For example, the prior nodes output the, the prior data and then the simulators take in the prior data and output the uh, similar output. And then the, um, so on, the summer statistics takes in the sim simulated data and output the, some, some uh, summarized data. And we include up from the box some common node types that you may want to use. Uh, but you can also dis uh, define your own nodes if you want to have some custom functionality in your inference methods. Um, like we aim to sort of have modular modularity in the, in the description of the alpha model. So like all the nodes in ELFI, you should be able to define in various programming languages, like the simulators, pretty often you may want to use C++ for speed, for example, or if you want um, some predefined R simulators, that should be possible. But the, for the simulator basic node, what is a required input that you need to have the parameter nodes and then the, some um, keywords that are mandatory, like the batch size. This ELFI processes the data in batches. So that's for 
that's required for the automatic parallelization as well as uh, gaining speed from the vectorization of the operations. Then the random state keyword, which is a NumPy random state object that is required for reproducibility. So you uh, keep track of the, of the random number generator so you can always um, reproduce the results. Uh, in addition to the simulator, you obviously have the prior nodes uh, and all the similar input parameters are required to have a prior node. And uh, the, so the DAG enables us to construct quite convenient hierarchical prior structures. And the, the prior nodes, they need to have at least two methods. So they need to have the, the capability of generating random variables via the RBS method and some of the methods require the pdf of the of the distribution such as bolfi for example what that's one of the methods implemented healthy but at minimum you need to have the rbs that the sampling based methods use in healthy but it has to be in skippy stats format so that's for the random number generation and such so here's an example of, uh, of an healthy model. So we have the MA2 uh, model as an example that I'm running through here. So it has the two parameters, T1 and T2, then the keywords, batch size, and random states that are defaulted at one and none. Um, the, always the first dimension in healthy are the repetitions of the data. So basically size of the batch. And then we can start constructing the model. So here is from the Mars 2012 paper, we define the true parameters to be 0 0.6 and 0 0.2 per the coefficients. And we generate some uh, artificial um, observed data that we feed into the model. So we built the model using here, the, the new model method. And then we construct the prior nodes that we feed into the simulator. Um, we have the, the some of the, the basic skip stats distributions are, are built in and accessible via some keywords. It says here is the uniform distribution for T1 parameter and uniform distribution for the T2. And then you define the simulator node by feeding the, these models, these model nodes T1 and T2 into it. And then our, in our impl current implementation, you also feed the observed data uh, to the simulator so that it's tied to MA2 simulator. And then you can give a whatever name you want to give to the simulator and also other nodes via the name uh, option. And then when you usually when you construct models in LF, it's usually a good idea to keep on, if you build it incrementally, it's a good idea to, to draw the model every now and then, and you get an output of the DAG. So here's a very simple uh, T1 and T2 go into the MA2. And what also we are recommending to do quite often when you're building models that you want to generate some data and look at the outputs from the model so that you can see that if you define custom priors, for example, that everything is working as it should be. So here we use the generate method to generate 500 samples from the model. And we ask for the outputs, well, basically all the nodes that we have currently in the model. So T1, T2, and MA2, uh, we can plot them using whatever plotting tool you wish. We have some plotting functionality available in LFB but for simple plots is sometimes more convenient just to use whatever um, plotting tool you wish. So here, everything needs to be in order. So T1, T2, they have uniform independent uh, distributions. So that's a uniform scatter plot there. And then you can look at the simulator output in time there. So the MA2 is working as it should. So, Pretty often when you do LFI, like ABC type LFI or BSL type um, LFI or whatever, you need summary nodes. And in LFI, these are, these are pre-built node types. 
and they are determinist operations and they are always associated with observed data. So the sort of the, the special feature of the summary notes is that it automatically uh, transforms the, the observed data carried from the parent nodes. So you don't have to fear that you're, mm, when you feed these into the discrepancy function that you're not playing with the same kinds of objects. So here's a uh, continuing of the example. So we define the auto variance summary statistic uh, for the MA2 model. So it's um, keeping track of the dimensions and shape forecasting is, is always uh, one of the trickiest things in, in general uh, inference uh, toolboxes. So here we keep track that the, the first dimension are the repetitions. So one batch um, consists of the, everything that's on the rows. And we can include them into our, our model. So we feed the, the simulator node that's accessed with model with the keyword MA2 and give us for the first auto coherence summer statistics, which is with lag one, we give the name S1 and with lag two S2 and with lag three S3. And we can check the model when we added the notes that everything's working as it should be by, by drawing the model again. And at this point, when you have the summary statistics, it's usually also a good idea to, to start investigating your, your workflow. And here we generate the fiber and samples from the model and, and look at the sort of the pair plots of the summary statistics. And uh, with red, there's also the reference uh, observed data also transformed with the summary statistics and plotted. And this is a sort of a feature that is, I find it convenient to, to look at whether or not your actual priors make sense in the, in the summary statistics domain. Then the other, well, bas the basic, basic node type, the last one that's sort of pretty often used is the distance node. So we, uh, calculate the, the difference between observed and simulated pair node inputs via the distance or discrepancy nodes. And we have the, so the skippy stats type spatial distances available via keywords in LFI. So Euclidean distances and Manhattan distances, those are available from the box, but obviously you can always, and you pretty often do define uh, custom distances or discrepancies. Here, example, continuing with MA2, uh, we define a Euclidean distance uh, by feeding the all three uh, summer statistic nodes in the distance node, D, and then we draw the model to look that everything is, is working currently. Um, you could obviously add um, as many summer statistics nodes, for example, as you'd like, but you can play around with what are the summary statistics that you're feeding into this um, distance node. So that's one possibility and one way of, of sort of investigating different summary statistics that uh, selecting what of the summary statistics you feed into this distance node. Um, and sort of the reproducibility of LFI models is one of the aspects that we're um, trying to emphasize and enable. Um, so all the nodes and dependencies can be redefined and rest of the graph will be unchanged. So the node outputs, they can be stored via the pool functionality that we had and reused so that you don't waste uh, precious resources when, when investigating models and, and doing the inference. For example, if you want to test different summary statistics or different distance functions, you, you can store the outputs from the, from the simulators and the priors and, and feed them to a different distance nodes and different summary statistics and re, sort of rerun the inference again. So here is an example of redefining the, the prior nodes. So we, we had the T1, T2 
um, distributions as being independent uniform distributions. And in the Marines 2012 papers, they define a, a this kind of triangle prior, and we can define that using the hierarchical structure um, of DAG. So basically we feed T1 uniform distribution into the T2 and we feed T1 and T2 to the MA2 and, and we can check the uh, using the generate function, generate method from the model to look that everything's working as it should be. And it's always a good idea to draw the, the, the model every now and then to, to see that the hair color structure, for example, is as you define it to be or want it to be. So that's sort of the, the basics of the, of the model definitions, but then you, you do the actual inference with the model and we have the L5, L5, L5 parameter inference class to carry out the inference. So currently we're at the version of 0 0.8.0 and the methods that we have available are obviously the rejection ABC and ABC SMC um, with extension, extensions of the APC SMC having the adaptive distance um, from the Dennis Pangos adapting the ABC distance function paper. And also the adaptive threshold selection for ABC SMC from the Umberto Simolas uh, paper. Um, you, you can find the links to the papers in the, in the LC webpage. Um, then we have the one of the sort of the core methods that we have in Elfi is the Bolfi method, uh, which we have had from the beginning, which is we are fitting the GB regression surrogate to the discrepancy function. And we provide multiple different acquisition functions um, to, to carry out the Bayesian optimization and active learning in Bolfi. Then I think the newest method that we've included is a robust optimization Monte Carlo that I think you'll be hearing more about today. So that's available. Then we have a, the ratio estimation type uh, methods, LFIRE and BOLFIRE uh, that are available. One of them, LFIRE, which is called in our case PILFIRE, like PY, LFIRE. It's available in LFI Zoo which is a repository for, for various different inference methods. But the, the ball fire, which is a feature that can be accessed via our GitHub repo, it lives there as a, as a branch currently, but it will be included in 0.8.1 in the, the master release. Uh, we have, uh, well, several methods in development, but the, the ones that are basically ready or available soon, um, it's, it may not be, may or may not be called split ball fee when it, the paper is ready, but in, in the archive version, it's called split ball fee, which is a version of ball fee that's aimed towards higher dimensions than the original ball fee. Then we have the DGP ball fee, which is the deep Gaussian process surrogate for the discrepancy function version of ball fee. And then we have Bayesian synthetic likelihood and methods in development as well. And also some extensions to the domain of neural network estimation uh, via the emulator networks. They are built in top of Torch in LFP. So the logic of, of LC parameter inference goes so that you first define the inference and then optionally you fit a surrogate to one of the LC nodes. Uh, for example, in the case of, of a ball fee, you fit the surrogate to the discrepancy node or distance node, and then you sample from the posterior. So, so only a few steps that you, you need to, to access the posterior distribution. Uh, but um, obviously it's more uh, involved. So we look at the steps more closely now. So the, the, as an example of a, of a parameter inference, to look at the ball fee method here. So before we do the ball fee inference on the MA2 model, we 
uh, add one more node. So we use the Elfi dot operation. So that's one of way to to include custom nodes, which is a, just a determinist operation on a, on a node. So we have the the logarithmic transform of the discrepancy node, and we use that as our as our basis for the GB surrogate that we do in Bolfi as recommended by by the authors of the paper, original Bolfi paper. So here is an example of, of a Bolfi fit. For, so when we do the Bayesian optimization, we are defining a sort of a bounded box for the parameters where we're doing the optimization and actually learning. So we have the, the T1 is, is cut up from minus two to two and T2 is from minus one to one, even though the prior is currently defined as triangle uh, prior. So we we make the the both the object by feeding the discrepancy node to it, and when you feed the last node in the F model, it inherits all the other nodes, all the parent nodes. Uh, then we want to process only one batch at a time because both is an active learning method. So we basically do one uh, simulation at a time in active learning when we select. And sort of try to select optimally where to query the simulator next. Then some other um, options like update interval when how often you update the GB hyperparameters and such. Then we fit the, the circuit to the, to the discrepancy using the fit method, which is the, the sort of the circuit fit method name that we use when we fit the circuits. So we ask for 20. Uh, evidence from the model. And also when you carry out the inference, it's usually a good idea to, to plot whatever is happening there pretty often, because it's possible to incrementally increase the sort of the inference state in ELFI. So when you ask for an in, in evidence 20, um, and when you ask an evidence 30, it does sort of resume the inference from the 20 simulated queries and, and make the 10 additional evidence queries from the simulator and it updates the state automatically. So we can sort of update uh, the inference state with let's say 10 evidence points and look whatever is happening there. So if everything's working correctly or, or sort of the, in this case, if the GP fit uh, is going okay. And then the 50 queries from the simulator, we plot the discrepancies and there the, the contour plot there is the actual GB mean contour um, of the sort of the, for the discrepancy function. So it seems to be converging and, and finding a reasonable uh, minimum that we sort of use when deriving that likelihood surrogate for the likelihood function. So what we do is that the end game is to, to produce a sample from the posterior distribution and that's in Elfi doing with the sample method. So the sort of the default sampler is the not sampler. And here we generate a forward change of 2000 iterations and everything seems to be uh, converging nicely based on our hat estimate. And then this, the, the Bolfi sample print out is the, is the summary of the results. And then it's also a good idea to look at the scatter plot of the, the actual posterior distribution to, to look at what, what the actual posterior distribution looks like. So the logic of LFI parameter inference goes so that how to choose the parameter values with the query simulator and how to update the inference state uh, with the parameter value alpha model output pair and when to stop the process and how to wrap the results. These are the questions that you have to answer when uh, implementing new methods in LFI. So just quickly going through the, here's the Elfi parameter inference class. So says some details about um, how we are processing, for example, the, the simulator query. So we have um, parallelized some clients, for example, we use Dask to parallelize the, the inference. So you can, you can choose the client 
that what you want to run the inference on, for example. So how to choose parameter values for the query simulator? You always have to define the prepare a new batch. So this selects where to query the simulator, which parameter values to use. And then you have to answer how to update the inference state. And this is the update method that you have to overwrite when, when doing your own inference method. Then when to stop the process. So we have to set an objective. For example, in rejection, rejection ABC, you simply put the num maximum number of samples you want to draw from the, from, the, uh, from the model with given within some threshold, predefined threshold. So that's the objective in that case. And then how to wrap the results. So what it is that you want to provide to the user from the state, from the inference states. And that's the extract result um, method that you have to overwrite when making a new method in LV. So there's not too many of the functions or methods that you have to overwrite, but um, we, we think it's, it's simple enough. So the roadmap from 2021 on behalf of Elfi is that we have the new methods coming up, at least the ones that I mentioned before, but we aim to um, aim towards the sort of um, for practitioners. So providing more adaptivity and user assistance and also exploration tools with new visualizations and diagnostics and also pro profiling options. And then we have the test bench functionality coming up in the next um, 0.8.1 update. And there's the read the docs is where our manual resides. So you can check that out. So I think that concludes the presentation. So thank you. Thanks, Henry. Question from the audience. I think Sorry, was there a question or was there uh, some noise? Okay, I saw that was answered in chat. There's some hands up. Okay, um, um, Dennis, please go ahead. You may be muted. Oh, Dennis's microphone is not working. Okay. Uh, then uh, Umberto, please go ahead. Yeah, a very quick one, sorry. Um, yeah, I was wondering if there are in the plans and the roadmap for maybe 2022, any, any, any uh, chance to create some sort of uh, uh, web-based environment for Elfi where basically maybe there are say a very simple um, model models pre-implemented that you can run in the browser or i mean something of course quite simple because i don't think we can run stuff very very complicated and, and and expensive but just for someone to try it without having to install the big python environment it, it, do you think that, that there will be something like that to experiment a little bit with simple models online well i mean the the sort of the simple implementation in that regard would be to use the, for example, Colabs, mm. Colab to, to provide notebooks to, to run something there. So that's definitely something that we could do. Uh, we, we do have the Docker containers available in Elfi. So if you don't want to sort of have, find the trouble to, to installing the Conda environments and such, so you can try Docker environments, Docker container that we provide. It should be simple enough. But yeah, um, Google Colabs would be the simple solution to not, not having to deal with the installation process. Thanks. So Henry, you may want to look at the uh, chat, Dennis's questions there. Yes, I'll, I'll be answering Den Dennis's uh, question there. Um, so, um, I, I, well, I, I guess we're- I a verbal. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's easy enough to
to, to have the CPU parallelization using automatic parallelization when you have a method that sort of supports that. So rejection ABC and ABC SMC, you, you can use the automatic parallelization using, for example, Dask. So that's simple enough. Uh, GPU parallelization is, I mean, black box GPU parallelization with a black box simulators is a bit more complicated. So, because, you know, you, you want to sort of exploit whatever is happening in, in within the simulator to actually take advantage of GPUs. So the sort of the emulator networks solutions that we have implemented, they don't actually use GPUs. You have the option to put them on, but, but I wouldn't recommend doing that. So it, it doesn't provide any speed. So um, GPUs, no CPUs possibly is easy. Thanks, Henry. I think uh, we'll go to the next speaker, who's Lorenzo Pacchiardi, and will tell us about.